The Buffalo Bills came so close to completing the comeback Sunday night after trailing 24 to 3 heading into halftime. They outscored the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 24 to 3 in the second half. Unfortunately for Buffalo, Tom Brady was able to connect with Rashad Pierman in overtime, and the Bills left Tampa with their second straight loss. So, how do the Bills get over such a devastating loss like the loss they had against the Buccaneers? Now, I've never played in the NFL, but I've played sports at high levels, and one thing that I've learned over time is you have to pull the positives, you have to put everything behind you that was negative and move forward now you can't forget the mistakes you have to acknowledge them and you have to get better but you need to use this loss as fuel going forward you can't shy away one thing that buffalo should take into consideration is that they came back in the second half and really for about a quarter and a half they owned the defending super bowl champions and they lost in overtime was it devastating yes but you can't live off the loss and get down on it pull the positives use it as motivation you showed the nfl what you're capable of now you've got to go out your next game against i believe they play the carolina panthers you have to go out and show the league just who you are and just how ready you are to go now sunday's matchup was easily the game of two halves right tampa bay looked unstoppable in the first two quarters and buffalo just seemed to make every wrong decision the bills also set a record of being the only team not to hand off the football in the first half of a football game but after looking so terrible the bills started trying new things in the second half and by the fourth quarter they began rolling over the buccaneers so outside of flipping scores what was the biggest difference between the first and second halves for both teams let's start with the tampa bay buccaneers they knew what was working they rolled in the first half the run game was going tom brady was moving the football creating turnovers on defense stopping josh allen containing him getting all over the receivers it was great they moved into the second half they came in with the exact same game plan no real adjustments which okay fine you've been doing well Buffalo, on the other hand, in the second half, started handing off the football. They started making adjustments defensively. They started doing things offensively that was able to get the best of Tampa Bay. They started forcing some three and outs, some short possessions by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So that was starting to tire out the Bucs defense. One thing that really happened in the second half is when Buffalo started rolling on Tampa, Bruce Arians did not make any of the necessary adjustments. And that was really the big story. And then we had plays like Tom Brady playing a little bit of selfish ball, pulling away a hand, a hand pulling away a handoff and deciding to throw the ball when really they were trying to run the clock up by three late in the game. Buffalo was able to come down, tie the game, a little bit lucky that a pass interference wasn't called on Stephon Diggs in the end zone, which would have put the ball in the one yard line. And ultimately, even in overtime, he made a nice pass and they won. But Buff the, the biggest thing is Sean McDermott made the adjustments and Bruce Arians didn't. Now the Buffalo Bills are 0-5 this season in games that are decided by one score. It was also mentioned on the CBS broadcast that Sean McDermott was emotional and lost for words during halftime when he was asked about the Bills' performance. There's been a bit of a groundswell of frustration coming from the Bills fan base over some of McDermott's coaching decisions, and some fans are suggesting it's time for Buffalo to move on. So should Sean McDermott they be on the hot seat after Sunday's loss. I don't believe so. I think that McDermott did enough in that game, made enough adjustments, and really Buffalo looked really solid in the second half that at this point, how could you turn around and say that Sean McDermott is the big problem? One thing that I've been growing frustrated with with McDermott as an outsider watching the team was his inability to make adjustments like we saw on Monday Night Football against the New England Patriots when they weren't able to stop the run till late in the fourth quarter and offensively they weren't getting around and, and playing to their strengths and the Patriots weakness. Josh Allen did not have a lot of runs himself in the game against Buffalo. They executed him more better against Tampa Bay running for 109 yards. So if I'm a Buffalo Bills fan, I am supportive of Sean McDermott keeping his job. The only way I think Sean McDermott is really on the hot seat for this season, if the Buffalo Bills who got four games left were to say lose out and not make the playoffs or go one for three and not make the playoffs, then I think Buffalo may need some sweeping changes. And sometimes in these kind of situations, owners will just, and general managers will make change for the sake of making change. If the Buffalo Bills, if something really goes wrong, I'm going to be honest with you, we can't say it's a personnel problem. They have great personnel. It would have to be a coaching problem.